breaking news, but the media is not your friend. That's a very, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're implying. And if you ever doubted that, if you ever, and if they were here, they'd say, well, no, we're not your friend, but we're also not your enemy. Watch the coverage of this presidential race. Watch it. All pretense of objectivity has been surrendered. Look at the headlines. Look at the word count even in local articles. They have surrendered. Look at, I, I'm not a big fan of WikiLeaks. I, one of the things I love about being a Republican is we don't have a different set of rules for our friends and enemies. We're not relativists. I don't think you ought to hack into people's emails. So I haven't read them, but I've read stories about them. How about we just go with that? <laughs> the guys at Politico are getting their articles approved by John Podesta. <laughs> but, uh, Politico may not be a big name in Greenville, but it's one of the two major news magazines in Washington, The Hill and Politico. And you've got a senior political writer for Politico asking Podesta, hey, is this article okay? You've got a CNN contributor, whatever the hell that means, and Donna Brazil. <laughs> Feeding questions? <laughs> They're not a friend. Donna Murray! Sofia Donna Murray! You want to win all the gift cards down below? All you got to do is hit the like, subscribe, turn notifications on, leave a comment down below, and enjoy the video. Those of us who practice this crap, you and myself, those of us who, who make money communicating with people is truth. And in the end, that's the only thing that we should be talking about. Not whether one word was taken here or one word was taken. If in the end, the whole of your argument, the whole of what you just delivered is true or not true, that's what you should be judged by. How am I wrong? Well, A, then the NAACP and the White House are far more guilty than Breitbart because they didn't wait to see the full video. And by the way, the NAACP had the full video. Breitbart but they didn't fire the anyone. Breitbart they didn't have the full video. And if we could get back to your claim that what you care about is the truth, why do you keep repeating the despicable lie that John Lewis was called the N-word 15 times on Capitol Hill at the anti-Obama protest? That well, is a lie. Hold on. And you have repeated that. All these, this network repeats it. All these networks repeated that and we, a and we you know, at least and, and we surely well, Sharon on, got a reputation hold on, hold back. On. let's be fair let's be fair we attribute that to the congressman who made that assertion that's called attribution it wasn't he John says, Lewis well, there John were several Lewis there who actually it. said that. They said it in a press conference. But let me come back to the, the, to the matter of hand there. So you're, oh, no, 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 no. Well, There's a $100,000 reward for anyone who can produce a video of someone calling John Lewis the N-word one time, not to say 15 times. And you're convinced? That reward has been out there for three months. And you're convinced that because no one has that, taken the money that it didn't happen? <laughs> I mean, that, um, there is more evidence that you have a problem with kitty porn. Or just give up. I have as much evidence for that as you do that John Lewis was called the N-word. And by the way, in fact, I have more evidence because there hasn't been the press searching all over you trying to find your problem with kitty porn and a $100,000 reward for anyone can, who can produce evidence of your problem with kitty porn. So I have a lot more evidence that you have a problem with kitty porn than that any Tea Party or ever called John Lewis the N-word one time, forget 15 times. <laughs> Let me ask you about Russia today. Why is it appropriate for any American to appear on a Kremlin propaganda network? Well, it's not a Kremlin propaganda network. You know what the fundamental difference I found in appearing on Russia today as opposed to CNN? And CNN and on MSNBC and on Fox. Remember, I was fired from Fox back in the uh, two, or my contract was not renewed in 2003 because I had the audacity to go on the Hannity and Combs show in November of 2002 and say going into Iraq would be a diversion in the war on terror. I was told subsequently that Roger Ailes didn't like that, wanted me off air. Mm. So I've had quite a bit of experience with media. What I found the difference with Russia today is they don't do pre-interviews. I've done pre-interviews with your people. I've done pre-interviews in the past when I've appeared on other ne networks. Just two days ago, I did a pre-interview with the BBC. They were going to have me on air, but once they heard what I had to say, they came back and said, oh, no, we don't need to use you now. 
So well, I'm glad you're here. I'm just concerned about the sourcing, the credibility here. white police officers by a black gunman in Dallas. That was really uh, what she based her comments on around today. And remember, Hillary Clinton has some vulnerabilities herself, even as she calls for criminal justice reform because of her support in the 1990s for anti-crime legislation that ultimately helped contribute to this era of mass incarceration. that she now uh, speaks out uh, again. Uh -oh. uh, we just lost, uh, we just lost Brianna Keeler. Who Sit right now. Do you know how many he young women to make that up? There you there is know no how many, way he okay. can win. Now, do you know how many young women in this country don't even know that Bill Clinton was impeached? No, maybe they heard Monica Lewinsky. They don't know the women that, that have accused Bill Clinton of sexual improprieties and that has said they've been threatened and intimidated by Hillary Clinton. You know, Hillary Clinton said that people have a right to be heard. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard, and you have a right to be believed. We're with you. And I think that in some of the most prominent cases, not only were the accusations not disproven, they were confirmed and acknowledged by President Clinton. How's that? So I think, well, he, he acknowledged he had a relationship with uh, Jennifer Flowers. He paid Paula Jones off uh, in a settlement. and. It's, in, in, and, and has acknowledged much of what Monica Lewinsky says happened. Monica Lewinsky says that you used a cigar as a sexual aid with her in the Oval Office area, which you'll be lying. Yes, no, or, or won't answer. So those are three pretty prominent examples. A, a girl who was raped by a pedophile that Hillary Clinton oh, bragged on. about getting off. Wait, let me finish. No, that no, no, Hillary no. Clinton, what do you mean? Let, you don't even want to hear it? That Hillary Clinton is on tape bragging about, as a lawyer, getting off on a technicality. An audio recording of an interview with Mrs. Clinton from the early 1980s was dug up. In that clip, Mrs. Clinton seems to admit she knew the defendant was guilty. Remember that case where I recommended that guy? That was, it, was, it, was, it was a fascinating case, a really interesting case. This guy was accused of breaking a 12-year-old. Of course, he claimed that he didn't do it. All this stuff. He took a lot of tests. I had to take Congress, which he passed, which forever destroyed my faith in politics. <laughs> and I saw him uh, How did it turn out? Oh, he played bargain. He got him off. He was time served in the county jail. He'd been in the county jail about two months. That woman now says Hillary ruined my life. What's what? Okay. What's wrong? I'm gonna That's I'm not gonna fair. Leave it there. Clinton. No, no. Thanks. God guys. forbid I'm that leave I should. It there. I'm God forbid there. that I should defend See, Hillary Mallsburg, Clinton. Judson she was appointed Phillips. to represent somebody, so she's got right. to do her job. I'm going to leave it there. That was 40 Goodbye. Years ago. Hey, watch your mouth, woman. All around me are familiar faces. Uh, suggesting that this was either something they already knew about or it was something that was public knowledge. Uh, you know, what do you make of that denial? Well, first of all, I read the Washington Post story very carefully, and more than that, I spent 16 years in the United States Congress tracking all these things that are said about foreign policy. There's a high BS quotient going on right here, and, it, and the meter should be going off all over town. Uh, you know, we don't need to look to Russia for any affirmation here. We need to ask questions about why is this intelligence uh, community trying to upend the President of the United States with these leaks? Here's the Post story. I mean, it's, and all over town people are saying, well, the President did this and that. Look, I disagree with President Trump on a number of issues, but on this one, there can only be one president, and somebody in the intelligence community is trying to upend this president in order to pursue a policy direction that puts us in conflict with Russia. The question is, why and who? And we need to find out. ...and sneak into some of the villages and actually see these atrocities. Uh, patients who'd run out of the hospitals um, that were shot up with birdshot, um, ambulance drivers who were beaten. And as we were heading back, out of these villages, we were violently detained by security forces in Bahrain, about 20 masked men with machine guns, who then tried to erase all the video that they found. And, and luckily, uh, my female producer and I were able to hide some discs uh, in our bras, and we were able to uh, actually get out of the country with this content. So you can imagine Bahrain's surprise when we got back to the U.S., and, and this content was airing on CNN. And right after that is when the phone calls started coming into the network, complaining about me 
Bahrain is paying CNN to create content that shows Bahrain in a favorable light. Even though CNN says this content, you know, is is editorially independent, it, it doesn't. See, Bahrain can't affect that. Well, we've seen that with this documentary not airing, and also with the constant struggle I had. Uh, at CNN to get Bahrain coverage, accurate Bahrain coverage of the human rights abuses on air while I was there. What CNN is doing is they're essentially creating what uh, I, some people have termed infomercials for dictators. And that's this sponsored content that they're airing on CNN International that's actually being paid for by regimes and governments. I mean, this violates every principle of journalistic ethics because we're supposed to be watchdogs uh, uh, on these governments. We're not supposed to allow them to be paying customers as, as journalists. You are fake news.